A rare win for the mainstream media, as it for once accurately covered the war in Gaza and how the Biden administration seems content on letting Israel have whatever it wants. NBC News reported that while President Biden made disparage Israeli President Bibi Netanyahu in private, forward-facing policy in the region hasn't changed a whit. Reports of private frustration between Biden and Bibi have become more frequent as the war rages on. That same NBC News story said that Biden finds Netanyahu impossible to deal with, has described him as the primary obstacle to peace in the region, and has called him an a-hole. Though the White House has publicly assured the two world leaders are on good terms. The rumors of private frustrations with Bibi come as journalists ask what exactly the Biden administration is doing when it comes to leveraging its assistance to Israel, to which the administration replies, not much. Take a look. Well, what levers have you used? Uh, so we have used diplomatic effort, uh, levers. The secretary that has. Means that, that, that means the secretary <coughs> and the president and you and Kirby and whoever else standing we, up and saying, wagging your finger and saying that that's not really leverage. Uh, I mean, we have engaged with them on a, um, uh, at a multitude of levels at this uh, administration. And, and as I the, kind of, you look at the list that we just went through with Humera, we have seen them take steps at our urging that have had real, yeah, have had real urging. tangible but impact, what, what but, levers, but they have not been enough. Uh, but what levers have you actually used? Uh, I, I think the, that when the United States of America uh, stands up and says something publicly, it matters. <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> Whatever leverage the U.S. government is using certainly is not legislative. The Senate voted 66 yeas to 33 nays to advance a bill banning unrefunding while making an exception for Israel funding and imposing stricter oversight over funding for Gaza. Speaker Mike Johnson threw cold water on that plan, releasing a statement yesterday urging the Senate to focus away from funding foreign engagements and instead focus on our own borders. Johnson wrote, quote, House Republicans were crystal clear from the very beginning of discussions that any so-called national security supplemental legislation must recognize that national security begins at our own border. It is what the American people demand and deserve. Now, in the absence of having received any single border policy change from the Senate, the House will have to continue to work its own will on these important matters. Yeah. So look, on one level, Johnson is full of malarkey. He just shut down the, the, the border deal of his dreams. And yeah. now they're just doing all this posturing because they think they've all but said very explicitly it doesn't help b uh, Trump in this election. Brennan, they're using if a, they get the border a, as an excuse to prevent <laughs> funding for foreign wars. Don't you agree with that thing. policy? That's I'm happy. On the Perfectly side happy. That, what I was going to say so on the <laughs> flip side of that is that God bless that the, the, the there's a backstop that's happening in the Senate here for their own Machiavellian political reasons that's preventing enormous amount of aid going out the door to a country that we have to remember the ICJ just decided was plausibly committing a genocide. A country that just implemented what has been called the Super Bowl massacre the night before last, uh, where there was the last huge civilian population in Gaza, 1.5 million people who were raided and attacked their tent city after having been told this is a safe place to go and this is a safe place to reside. So, you know, I'm glad it exists. And contrast that, by the way, to what happened when Democrats were in the House and we got instance after instance, video after video of people like AOC getting browbeat, pressured and crying on the House floor because their arms were twisted into voting for more funding for Israel, voting for more Iron Dome funding. And who knows what those kind of bargains were like or what kind of pressure they were under. But at the end of the day, the Democrats get everybody in line to continue to vote to send money under, uh, overseas. And through whatever machinations happened over the course of the last year with a, a McCarthy ouster and what have you, we now have Republican leadership in the House, which is putting a stopgap on this stuff. Yeah. So in terms of the statements made by Biden officials with mm -hmm. respect to Netanyahu, look, I've said this before, but I, I just think Biden is making himself look so weak, yes. is landing in this uncanny valley of just the worst of all worlds, we could either say, we could just say, we agree with what Israel's doing, or we don't like it, but we think it's necessary, and we support it, and we're funding it, because we think this is tied to our own national security interests. They could make that claim. I wouldn't agree with that, but they could make that claim. Or they could say, well, we would have liked to support Israel, but what they're doing has gone far beyond the pale, and Netanyahu is difficult to work with, and he's taking us for a ride, and we're not going to fund it. Sorry. Or we could say, we could have my position, which is, you know, what they're doing is really their business, and the U.S. shouldn't be involved in every conflict all over the globe, and we're not going to fund it because it's not in our own national security interest. 
Good luck to you. But what they're doing is saying, we don't really agree with what they're doing, but we're powerless to stop it. Here's more money. Yeah, what's especially, Who does that please? Yeah, what's especially perverse about this is that 27,000 plus people have already been killed, right? So remember, we, we got to this place through uh, as we got to this place, we had multiple instances of spokespeople standing at a podium just like that telling us, well, that Israel has a right to self-defense. Israel has just experienced the biggest uh, yeah. loss of Jewish life since the Holocaust. Israel is our ally. Israel has a right to self-defense. And it was clear as day to any reasonable observer who understands the history of the region and the pattern of Israel's excessive retaliation to attacks that we were gonna very quickly get to a place where nothing that Israel was doing could be characterized as self-defense. Knowing that that was gonna come, the Biden administration should have put some guardrails on and said, look, I, I would have recommended none of this be allowed, right? But even if you're from the position that the Biden administration where you're gonna say, I'm gonna let them get their an eye for an eye, a pound of flesh or whatever biblical metaphor you wanna use, to say, we're gonna cut this off at, you get three weeks, you get a month, you get 5,000 deaths, you get 10,000 deaths. You gotta keep your civilian to Hamas kill ratios within these bounds of typical warfare. But once you eclipse that, you're off, you're off the teat, you know, you're off mm -hmm. the funding teat. That didn't happen. And now we're so far over the line that all of the excuses that were once used to justify getting to this point expired months ago. When you have 12,000 children dead, when you have graphic videos of a 12-year-old girl dangling from a wall with her legs being stripped off from the night when Americans were all watching the Super Bowl, when you have every single university in Gaza destroyed, when you have 16 cemeteries desecrated, you've gone way over the line and there's literally nothing you can say. So that's why you look weak, because at this point there is nothing you can say and they're I mean, the, the public starts to ask the question, well, why wouldn't you have stopped this earlier? And why is the most you can do is to put out these statements to the press to try to make it look as though there's this moral gap between you and Bibi. Oh, I'm telling him behind the scenes, I'd really prefer that he not, without using any of the levers at your actual disposal to prevent him from dropping the bombs, which literally have the English names of American right. manufacturers on the bottom of them. And this is someone we're ostensibly close with, that we've been described as a key, the key U.S. ally in the Middle East. And if we can't get, again, we can't get him to do what the Biden administration claims it says it wants him to do, yeah. which is in some you know, sort of way rein this in. And have he won't do that. Solution. So how can we get, how can Biden be trusted? Right, we support a two-state solution and they don't. How can we, so how is Biden ever going to get someone like Vladimir Putin to, to play ball or Xi Jinping? If we can't even get, ostensibly our, like our best friend is how, how they're described in, uh, in, by the administration. And they don't, they don't and, and Biden is not respected enough or the US government at large, the taxpayers are not respected enough by a key ally. I think that's very frustrating and, and makes the administration look weak, regardless of what your you know, feelings are on the conflict itself. And kudos to the journalists that have been asking these questions. There was another exchange just yesterday with John Kirby, where he was asked, has Biden threatened to strip aid to Israel? Really concretely, mm -hmm. good question. Has Biden threatened to strip aid to Israel if they advance a Rafah operation that doesn't account for civilians? Caveat it up the wazoo. Right. They can do it, but they gotta account for civilians. Reasonable question. John Kirby. We are going to continue to support Israel. They have a right to defend themselves against Hamas, and we're going to make sure they have the tools to do that. Yeah, but I mean, that's a clearer statement. That's a, that's a, you, you disagree with that statement, obviously, but that, you know, if they just, if they consistently take the position that we, we support Israel, we are on Israel's side, and Israel can continue doing whatever is necessary to defeat Hamas, and Hamas is not defeated, so this will continue until Hamas is defeated, that at least, makes some internal sense. But well, then when they undermine their own position by saying, but Netanyahu is privately an a-hole and we actually don't want him to continue until Hamas is defeated, we want him to stop at some time short of that because the too many casualties are making people in our own democratic coalition upset with us and it's imperiling my reelection. And like that, that's, that's, the, that's the part where I'm like, okay, well then you just look kind of incompetent. Right, well, it's not about what I think. That's not the issue here. The issue is that Half of U.S. adults think that Israel has gone too far, and big majorities believe that there should be a ceasefire. That's Biden's concern, not what little of me sitting here on this news program happens to think. But stick around. We have more Rising for you coming up next.